Hi there everyone, my name is Helenique Ardurou and I'm a peak performance trainer and tonight we're going to be speaking about the three mystical secrets. Some of you might be on the Higher Love page regularly, maybe you've noticed a few posts I put up last week around Valentine's Day. This used to be a really hard time for me when I was single because it was really a time of mixed emotion and you know there's some wonderful things about being single that we all know about, we all love, and then there's also all kinds of things uh, about being on your own or single out of a relationship that also complicates your life and really um, finds, uh, finds us in, in difficult and sometimes confusing places emotionally. So there's all kinds of reasons why uh, Valentine's Day triggers all of this stuff in us. I'm sure you have your story and, and your experiences in your life that lead you to consider relationships as a place where you can grow and expand and also a place where you are faced to confront a very, you are faced by and you are forced to confront very specific things uh, about yourself and about your feelings that you don't necessarily have to do when you are single. So Valentine's Day was really an opportunity then for everybody to decide to see this as a time for a little love revolution. So I decided to do this training series called Love Slick. And here we are, and we are covering three very specific images that for me triggered some uh, deep concepts or points that we can look at about long lasting relationships. Now in the last while, there's been a lot of people turning into uh, coaches on love and relationships. And I myself, have decided that this is one area I will work in because I really learned so much in the last six years from 30 of the world's leading love experts, very specific relationship uh, therapists, people who are uh, biologists, chemists who study hormones and the way we bond by uh, all kinds of authors and uh, thought leaders in our time, also therapists and transformational coaches women and men that I consider to be really highly developed themselves. And many of them were over the age of 45. And they were actually talking very specifically about love and relationships over the age of 35, primarily in people that are 40 years and up. So if you're wondering whether this is the right place for you to be and you're single and you're any other age, it's absolutely still relevant. And if you are in a relationship and you're wondering whether this is actually gonna help you, it definitely will. Because we all know the point in our lives where we understand that meeting somebody that's, re that's really able to understand us is going to give us a very specific kind of appreciation and value that we can't really get on our own. Being in a relationship provides a mirror that also makes us confront very specific things that we cannot see when we are on our own. That's not to say that you can't be happy and fulfilled on your own, of course you can. And it's actually something to strive towards, but it's also very appropriate to learn some of the deeper um, mysteries of harmony within relationship while being in your own personal love life. So there are these three images that I was putting up and each one of them tells a story which I'm going to talk about tonight with regards to how it relates to tantric teachings and the mystical side of really what we primarily talk about in tantric psychology as the masculine and the feminine. So we all know about this symbol that has half of its white sided and the other half black sided and inside each side is the opposite color and it's often presented as a Chinese symbol called the yin yang and it's a really good image to to have in your mind as we speak about masculine and feminine not only because we look at that symbol as a symbol that has two complementary opposites in the way that they are shaped and designed but inside each one there is the opposing color and that's the part to really begin to understand especially when we look at this uh, idea of softness and strength now many of you have been brought up in a generation maybe my age or you're older than me and if you're watching it and you're younger you would still be influenced by the generations that were 
pretty much gendered in terms of the roles that men would take and the roles women would take in relationships. And really, when we look at this first concept, it's called the gender mix of softness and strength. We need to try and understand that uh, there has been a, a myth that's been perpetuated, uh, a lie, I like to call it, a love lie, that really speaks to the fact that men are meant to be strong and women are the ones that are soft. And sometimes the association has been attached to that, that women are sometimes the ones that are weak. And this is really not true. In fact, the, the deeper mystical teaching is that as there is a feminine principle, it is a very easy to understand it as the earth, the planet, water is feminine. And there is a debate about this fact, but I have actually researched it and confirmed that Yes, indeed, I'm going to stick with that uh, primary idea that the earth, the planet is feminine and the ocean is feminine. And so when we want to try and understand the feminine principle, we need to look to nature because nature herself is feminine. Some spiritual people talk about the planet being one of the most powerful uh, organisms that we know as human beings. And this organism is life-giving. In other words, this is a planet that is a living being and it is nurturing and providing life for all of us on it. And this then is also likened to the moon. The moon is also considered to be feminine, whilst the sun is thought of as masculine. And so in mysticism and tantra, the moon revolves around the sun, meaning that the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. This is not to say, though, that the moon doesn't have its own purpose and its own power, its own force of light, but it has a complementary relationship with light itself. This goes very deep, but for today, I want to stay just on this idea that they work together, the moon and the sun, to create a very specific relationship to the earth. And so with us, our masculine energies are the ones that are able to drive us to have a certain kind of strength. And our feminine energies are those that help us to also have very specific kinds of strength. So instead of putting these qualities separately into separate bodies with different genitalia, it's much more accurate to put them both back into yourself and to look at your femininity and to understand that as your nurturing abilities, your sensitivity, your emotionality, your sense of relating to other people, being connected to the sensitive, delicate aspect of life, and then also all kinds of contradictions to that, which uh, we have not been uh, learning very much about because we have a very biased society of our gender. But really the feminine is this nurturing ability. And when it is in a, a healthy balance, it can develop and become really strong. We can have a great strength in serving others. We can contribute great things to actually being in, uh, in our sensitivity and in our emotional intelligence. We, we have a way of being strong in our vulnerability. And that's what we need to develop inside our feminine quality. Inside our masculine, we have a natural way of planning things, of being active, of being the container for the flow of life. There's a lot of structure and order in the masculine principle, and we all have that inside of us. So again, it's really important to find the strength of that quality. And by strength, we mean that again, in the masculine essence inside of us, we actually can be soft. And we need to know how not to keep pushing on into progress and trying to uh, compete to the point of losing the collaboration and losing the sense of respect and love we have for other people. And this is really how we are learning to create this complementing relationship between the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, the white and the black that we see in this very powerful yin yang symbol and the dot in each separate section complementing the other section. Now, when we talk about softness, we could say that a lot of men now are quite confused about how softness plays a part. And so we have again done this dramatic um, decision to put softness 
as something negative for men. And it's something we need to repair in some way. So I want to encourage all of you to begin to think about yourselves as someone who has both sensitivity and strength, that you have both genders inside of you. You have both testosterone and estrogen. You have different hormones operating inside of you. And then you have the psychological qualities that go with that. And your job in life is not to polarize this out and put it out to your partner and expect your partner to be strong if they're a man and or expect your woman to be the nurturer who's in the kitchen if she's a woman and just leave it at that. Your, your real growth will happen when you can learn to integrate these aspects inside of yourself and actually become uh, more than a tough male, if you are a tough male, to have the, the greatest strength to be able to reach your vulnerability and your sensitivity. And then if you're a woman, to make sure that you are going beyond your female softness and standing in your power, in your truth, knowing where to put your boundaries, knowing how to take care of yourself and not just others. Let's move now to the second very important tantric secret here for today, which is all about the body as a temple. Now, in uh, very specific practices, the body is used as a container for the spiritual experience. And so couples can actually use sex and lovemaking and even stages well before lovemaking in the way that we consider it to be sexual, the whole uh, area of sensuality and just touching each other, even gazing at each other through the eyes can become a tantric experience. This helps us to get in touch with the sensuality of our own being, with the essence of life. And this essence nature is really the closest thing we have to understanding whatever it is that is beyond this planet. And by this I mean maybe God is the word you would use for it, maybe the universe is another word for it, maybe energy is a word you use for it, maybe chi. And if you're not decided on any of these or agree with any of these, you might just use the word the invisible. There is an invisible presence inside each and every body which keeps it alive, which keeps it awake, keeps it breathing and the heartbeat then pulsing. We call this the life force. And this life force is in every single one of us continuously. And of course, when life leaves our body, this life force leaves our body. This is exactly what that means. So now when you are actually using your physical body as a temple, you might choose to cleanse this body, purify it, so that you can use these aspects of mind and this great incredible organ that we call the heart to reach its greater capacity. And in so doing, you get a chance to really connect with a, a deeper, profound, essential nature of all of life. Tantra is very much about that. And it's about understanding how energy, this life force, moves through the body. So when you have a conscious partner and you are pretty much aware of how you might be acting out these lower levels of mind in the relationship. In other words, you will be a bit more aware of your triggers and your reactivity and your behavior that really affects the other person negatively. And you choose to work on that in a certain way. The relationship can become much more conscious, both for you and for your partner. And the growth that you can experience is enormous. So one way to actually accelerate that and to explore that process is also through the body. And so the tantric teaching is really that the body is a temple that can act as a channel, a conduit, a catalyst. Conduit is a really good word where we indicate then that the body can actually transport us to very peak states and very peak experiences. And these normally do happen in the realm of lovemaking and through orgasm. Now, there are many uh, aspects to lovemaking that don't need to involve um, the exchange of juices and or the whole sexual experience. So even in those states, when people practice these techniques in Tantra and the body becomes this, this kind of conduit for higher spiritual growth, 
there are ways to be able to witness this energy and use it in the lovemaking process to actually come into contact with what people call God, to actually have a conversation with God post-orgasm because one is merging into the state of oneness with your partner. Now, if you do uh, have any experience in this and or if you are interested in it, you will know that um, there are many ways that we can allude to that and we can develop ourselves to be able to be ready for that. And some of them are already posted onto the High Love page here, but there really are great places to go and study these teachings. And if you do, I would recommend you explore the whole idea of white tantra or red tantra and try to stay away from black tantra or gray, gray tantra these are different kinds of ways of teaching the tantric wisdom and i definitely recommend ones where you are not necessarily having sexual intercourse in order to experience the energy and the life force it's great to be able to study without going into that for the beginning certainly there's now a really powerful um, story that can be told about the journey in relationships and how challenging that can be but what's so powerful about this is the fact that there is something to be said for the endurance that we have in the relationships and for many of us it's not always clear how long is long enough how long do we stay in a relationship in order to make it wonderful and fulfilling and for some of you you might have only ever had one partner and you've explored this relationship for the longest time for most of your life you've even grown with this partner through different uh, areas of your life and through different gen um, general phases of your life you've had the same partner whatever your experiences are this last mystical secret is true for all of us and that is that there is actually a world that we experience in life that is one without words. And this is a kind of communication that we also need to become very skilled in and we need to be able to express ourselves both verbally in communication in relationships, but also in, in a quiet way and in a silent way. And in fact, one of the highlights that named this area that I'm talking about was the uh, post that I made with a live video on the very specific wording of silence creates love. And by this I mean to say that the silence we have in relationships can sometimes be an extremely powerful healing force after fights and after conflicts. So if you are having a really difficult time in your relationship and you know that you do not learn to be quiet or still yet in times of conflict, this is an area for you to begin to practice on immediately. It will give you a lot of relief and it will give your partner a lot of relief and it will also help to connect you to this invisible realm where you start to look at the silent communication. Because really, when you see uh, the posts related to this video, you will also understand that it's a very long journey for us to really find our way home as souls and spirits that come to this planet and incarnate into these bodies and have to learn many things about how to return ourselves back to a form of inner peace. And silence is one of those ways. It's one of those things we need to learn to use in order to find states of peace. Now, I want to make a quick mention about the misuse of silence or the problematic silences that also can happen in relationships, which I know we all are aware of as well. And so we need to be careful that we're not talking about silence as one thing. There is times where being silent in a relationship is actually very destructive. For example, when you are feeling feelings and you are repressing them for long periods of time, this is not necessarily what I mean by silence creates love. Those are times where you, know, you do need to find a way to communicate what your emotional needs are in the relationship. And that's the greatest challenge for most of us. So if you're using silence to actually force yourself into uh, a place of not having or a place of worthlessness, that's something to be careful of. Also, if you are using silence to punish your partner, this is also something you need to stop doing 
because it's a very destructive, toxic way of communicating. The silence I'm talking about is the silence of knowing that not speaking or not explaining your frustration in a certain moment is a much more healthy choice than blaming, shaming, assaulting, complaining, or getting uh, your frustration out in a communicated, loud, annoying way. Another kind of silence that I'm talking about is the silence of stepping back and leaning back in the relationship at times when you find you're not being heard. This is a very important strategic skill that you learn yourself in order to begin to witness a little bit more of what we spoke of at the top of this point, the invisible communication. Sometimes we don't really know what our partner means or what they are feeling when they are speaking. Sometimes we don't really trust that uh, we are being heard in the right way. And when that's going on, it's sometimes a bit pointless to keep communicating verbally because you're not really giving yourself the right kind of space to assess the situation correctly. You might be very triggered, very reactive in a fight, and you keep talking ahead and this is a time where silence could really help you to pull back, lean back, and just start to feel what's going on in the room. Give it a few days, come back to the conversation a bit later. Another aspect of the healthier form of silence is also when we are learning to really listen instead of talking. And this is a very hard thing sometimes, Often with women who need to communicate emotionally a lot, it can become very challenging to step back enough and give yourself the kind of uh, distance and space you really need from this very chaotic or conflicted space that you're having and really hear the other person, even at times where they themselves are very triggered and very active and very intense. So this is another way where your silence can maybe build the love and affection and through the deeper understanding and the, the deep listening, the active listening that you will have at that time. So try to experiment with that so that you can practice this third mystical secret. And the reason I connected to mysticism here is because silence is one of these very, very powerful forces that we begin to relate to when we meditate. And when we have uh, prayer moments, we are again in a state of silence. When the mind stops talking to us and the inner critic stops bothering us, we can also reach a state of silence. And so this mental noise that's constantly with us can often keep us distracted from really knowing the truth of what we feel, the truth of what others feel, the essence nature I talked about before, so silence is a very powerful way to penetrate into those spaces and times. And if you do it with discipline and you practice it and you learn even to quieten the mind and meditate, you will find that silence can become an incredibly healing force in a relationship. So this has been a, a really special uh, set of tantric secrets, sharing them with you and a special time enjoying um, the beautiful flowers I have here in the background, which are here to inspire us. And for this last uh, point, I want to just mention to you that one of the most important things for us to do always in our lives and in our relationships is to learn to let the love in. So if it means having very conscious moments where you consider having something in your life, bringing something into your world that's really going to make you feel love and affection, then do that for yourself. Because the more love you can feel internally, the more you can absorb what's coming from the outside. And with this is this reminder to never get dependent on someone else's love. Never to rely on the love you think you need from others or the love you desperately want to have from others as your sustenance. Your love should come from you towards you at all times, and all other love is a bonus. See if you can then let the love come in that is coming in, but make sure that you are also loving yourself first. 
Thank you so much for watching. This is Helenique Argeru, and I will see you again on another video. Bye-bye.